Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got a short little knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Kaiser Porcupine, which is probably a knife that's flying under the radar for a lot of people. It was certainly flying under the radar for me. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Um, about a week ago, I remembered that this knife existed because I found it in my, you know, pile of knives that's waiting for review. I got it out, looked at it, threw it in the pocket, carried it for a bit. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of great elements here and elements that you would expect to see on a nice, inexpensive knife. But when I looked up the price, I was really impressed. Um, this has a lot of cool stuff and it's, it is truthfully a very good EDC knife and the price is really the cherry on top. So I'm going to link this knife right down below. It does definitely come in multiple configurations, I believe. So if you don't like Jade, that's fine. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to Kaiser for sending this in. I assume that's who sent it in. I honestly can't remember. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This is a knife that I get to keep, but it will eventually be given away. If you don't know, I give away knives almost every weekend on live streams. So if you needed an additional reason to subscribe, there you go. Let's go ahead and measure it. Overall length is coming in at eight inches. Blade length, three and a half. Cutting edge, 3.35. Nice full size knife here, which is nice considering the price point. How about some size comparisons? Uh, any custom scales you see here can be found down in the description under Original Goat and others. So up against the AD10 and the AD20.5. See, full size, not quite as tall as the AD10, not quite as long, but definitely longer than the AD20.5. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? You can see here it's almost exactly the same overall length as the Spyderco PM2. And then finally, let's put it up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Hogue Deca. Very similar in overall size to the Ritter Hogue. How's the action on this knife? It's very good. You can see here, not only do we have fantastic access to the black <laughs> stainless steel liner, uh, but it's recessed, which is nice. We don't usually see that at this price point. We usually see just like a lipped liner. Um, and that's cool. So this is one of those knives where it kind of has, you know, this is the flipper tab and it's not super duper prominent, but it is there because of a nice, you know, there's a cutout here. But in this position, what we like to do when we're disengaging a knife like this, we like to sort of do all of these movements with one hand. You can get it to catch right there, but you're going to have to push your thumb up as high as possible so it actually catches that flipper tab. And here's the problem. That detent ball is just wanting to do a little bit of double clutch there, but if you catch it just right, it's fine. The other option is scoot your thumb down and have the blade catch on your finger because you're really not, there's not enough room to catch it in the sharpening twirl. So you're gonna have that little point coming down on your fingernail. So outside of that, you know, it's a little tricky. There's not enough blade when it's coming down to really make me worry that it's gonna split my fingernail or anything. But I'm just letting you know that's kind of what you're gonna be dealing with unless you turn the knife sideways and just don't let it touch at all and then close it. But the action itself is good. The detent is about medium. The flipper tab, you get plenty of leverage in a light switch situation, right? The other thing you can do is safely disengage the uh, liner lock and then use your finger to safely close the knife. But depending on how you like to open and close it, those are you know, points that I like to go over. The action itself is very good. You can see here we have absolutely fall shut controlled action, which is also not necessarily something you get on every budget knife. And believe me when I say this is a budget knife. Um, so that's, that's also really cool. Let's do carry profile. Thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. It's actually not quite as thick. It's very close, but not quite. And it's probably because the liners are recessed and not added to the thickness of the G10 scales here. So length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. This guy's going to be longer in the pocket than the Para 3, but a little bit shorter than the PM2. Not quite as tall. Truthfully, the carry experience with this knife was very positive, and I really don't have an issue with it. Let's go ahead, while I've got my calipers out and ready to go, let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness here. So we're looking at about 110 thousandths on the spine. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. We are looking at a T8 here. 
And that's because the pivot is almost certainly a T8, which it is. And how about the body screws? Those are T6, unfortunately. There is, you can actually see through here, there's another screw underneath holding on to the standoff uh, on top of the um, nested liner. So we have two T6 screws on this side, two on this side, and then two for the pocket clip. But you can turn the pocket clip around and mount it for uh, lefty carry, which is nice. It's T6 and that's a bummer, but hey, at least it's minimal hardware. As long as you have the right tools for the job, you should be good to go. Lefties rejoice, right? Let's go ahead and weigh it. I don't know why we're doing things slightly out of order today, but I'm just trying to stop my iPad from falling off this mountain of stuff to my left. Uh, the weight on this knife is 3.32 ounces, which is a perfect one-to-one -one ratio, not just with, like when we're talking about overall blade uh, or knife weight to blade length ratio. Basically what we like to see or what I like to see is an ounce an inch. This is very good. Um, it's not just that way for the blade, it's that way for the cutting edge, right? It exceeds that for the blade length. So that's very, very nice. And the feeling of balance is legitimately right behind the pivot, right where you're gonna have your index finger in that standard grip position. So that's very, very nice. A Lot of very good elements here. All right, meat and potatoes time. There's not really a lot to go over. This is a very basic knife and does not require a complex review. <sighs> this guy's funny. He's funny. He's aware of his own name. Anyways, the uh, scales are G10, peel ply textured, right? And we didn't talk about the blade material. The blade material is 9CR18MOV, which is a steel that we regularly see at this price point. And it is a good composition. This is an ingot form composition, not powder formed, right? But uh, for example, it's uh, the base or very similar to the base uh, that uh, Artisan Cutlery and CGRB use for their proprietary powder form steel, which is uh, AR RPM 9. So the base version of this steel has been widely accepted as a budget steel for a long time, and it is definitely one of the better choices that you can make at this price point. I have zero issue with it. It's not going to win any awards for edge retention, but it does an okay job. It's plenty tough, it's plenty stainless, and most importantly, it is super duper easy to touch up, which is, I think, a huge factor when it comes to a budget knife, because you're going to use this, right? I mean, it, it's there are plenty of people, including myself, that use knives that cost a lot of money. But it's safe to say that the vast majority of people who are interested in knives are going to buy this knife because they definitely plan to use it and use it often. So being able to touch the blade up, regardless of how long the edge lasts, and let me tell you, the edge retention, like I said, it's not going to win any awards, but it'll do a good enough job. It'll hold an edge much better than some of the crap that we still see some companies trying to force through as, like, you know, decent steel. For example, your um, 7CR or your, God forbid, your 3CR 13 MOVs. Oh, God. There's a lot of other steels in there, right? But 9CR 18 MOV is definitely one of the better choices you can make at this price point. So I don't have a problem with that. Ergonomically, this knife is very, very comfortable. It's very roomy, and there's a nice choke-up position right here, left or right-handed. The pocket clip, it's not my favorite style, but it's not the most defensive in the world because the bill is flat and not like some of these come up way too high and truthfully this is partially in the style that I don't like it's just not quite as high as something like you know look at um Civivi's clip yikes guys yikes that doesn't sound like much but this is much more grabby this not so much it comes down a little bit I would have preferred that they just cut it off right here that way we end on a on a ramp right but they didn't, and that's not really that big of a deal. It's not a super long clip, and it's it's pretty shallow. So not much in the way of a hotspot. The flipper tab, because of how they designed this, is actually not super prominent in the open position. And that means you've got a little bit more ergonomic freedom versus knives that have a really pointy flipper tab right here. And they kind of lock you into a forward position or a, um, you know, a kind of a choked back position. Not here. You can kind of move around. There's a lot of ergonomic openness here, and that's nice. The jimping also complements the index finger position very nicely. Really not a whole lot going on with the blade shape. It's got kind of a hornet body. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, not a lot going on with the handle shape. It's got kind of a hornet body here, but it's good and ergonomic. And it's just, I mean, there's a lot of uh, designs that have a similar body shape. The blade is a pretty classic Warncliffe blade, right? I'm going to call it that. Some people say that I'm not classifying it correctly. I, I got to, um, listen, I'm going to save you the whole paragraph you're about to type. I don't care. I'm going to call this Warncliffe and then I'm going to move on with my life because I just can't... <laughs> I just can't dedicate any energy to that. But it's going to work. Most, More importantly than classifying it correctly, 
This will work very well for EDC. This is one of my favorite blade shapes functionally. Aesthetically, I'm always gonna prefer a drop point, but if I'm being honest, your sheep's foot and Warncliffe style blades just work better for day-to-day -day stuff. The Warncliffe's got a little bit more of a tip, so if you do a lot more puncturing or whatever, then that's gonna work better. This doesn't have any belly, right? So slicing is not gonna be, you know, this thing's forte, but it will still slice just fine, and your draw cuts or your shaping cuts will be very easy to do. In fact, the spine is pretty accommodating for this specific finger uh, position. I like to get right up here behind the edge, and it still works just fine. There's a good safe spot for your middle finger to be right here. This is kind of like how I like to do my, you know, my draw cuts, which I find myself doing almost more than anything else, right? But it'll work. There's a heavy flat that runs out about 80% the length of the blade. I'm not going to tell you that that tip is uh, super durable because it's not, right? So as long as you're not like chiseling on concrete or whatever with your knife, then you should be okay. When you poke into stuff, make sure that what you're poking into is not as hard as the blade, right? And if you do poke into something that's maybe necessar not necessarily as hard as the blade, but it could create enough force to snap it, like wood. Let me tell you, I know a guy who knows all about that. Um, don't uh, stab this into wood and jerk around with it. That's, um, that's what I would say, right? Do knife things with your knife and not other tool things. You should be good to go. It says Kaiser on one side and it says porcupine on the other, which I don't like the idea of putting the name of the knife on the knife. To me, that's a lot like putting the word Camaro on the windshield of your Camaro. It already, we already know it's a Camaro, right? <laughs> so that's why. But uh, okay, it's there. I would imagine that you can get this with a black blade. Usually Kaiser offers these in like a satin or a black blade. Maybe not. Maybe this is the only configuration, which they also do sometimes. That's confusing. But either way, if this is the only configuration, I think it's a decent looking knife. They're not doing any wackadoo lines or anything like that. So yeah, I think we're good to go. Like I said, positioning for left and right hand carry for the pocket clip, that's nice. Just some regular standoff uh, construction or just it's just pillar construction, so two standoffs there. There's no place for a lanyard, but not very many people care, so uh, whatever. Uh, we have a deep carry clip. It's not fully deep, just a little bit of a peak sticking up out of your pocket, but no big deal. The clip itself is not recessed, but the screws are. I think that's much more important. There are two screws in the clip, which means it's not going to wiggle, so that's okay, and you're not really going to have to fight it much to get it in and out of your pants. The stop pin is actually located internally and it's attached to the blade running on channels that are carved out on either side of the steel liners. You can see that right there. So we have two points of contact versus one on a traditional, right? It's just like this on the bug out. It's just one point of contact with there being a lug on each side. You have two points of contact, which should help with centering and action as well as lockup solidity, right? Uh, we have uh, just a steel Liner lock contacting the frame, and honestly, the co the uh, contact geometry is good, and the percentage of contact is also good. We can see that right here, actually. That little black mark, there's plenty of contact, not a steep slope or anything like that. So no blade play up, down, left, or right, no movement whatsoever, no lock stick, no pivot lash, extremely smooth in here, very nice, and a nice medium but clicky detent with perfect centering. So that's good. Oh, and no detent lash either. It's a $42 knife. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there like this, right? But I think what I like about this one is um, the fact that number one, it's 42 bucks and it has all the appropriate materials. But number two, it's a full-size knife, a full-size Warncliffe that's very ergonomic and it's a flipper. And we have a, a recessed uh, liner lock. So we don't have unnecessary thickness. The whole thing just feels like it's well-designed, right? They're not, they, didn't, they didn't reinvent the wheel. They didn't do anything ultra special. And there is still decent competition out there for this, but this is a good value. This is a knife that I would expect to see for 55, right? Or even 57, 58. It depends on the company who makes it. But um, yeah, Kaiser made a good knife here. They didn't, you know, I can understand why it might be not the most popular thing in the whole world, but it's a good value. If you're like, man, I want a good full size, you know, budget Warncliffe that's just not wacky. It's just like a straightforward budget Warncliffe. Though, this is a good buy, right? period. I, I have no real major issues with this. I just think it's a, it's a, it's a good purchase. So I'm going to put this on my recommended knives playlist. And it's also going to go on my cheap knives. I like playlist. I mean, at $42, it's just hard to argue with. So anyways, thanks again to Kaiser for apparently sending this in. Sorry if it was like months late. <laughs>
<laughs> this, this should still be available. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. If you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.